In a video previous to this one, we used WooCommerce to add an extra charge to our checkout, which we called VAT. And what this would do is that it would get a flat fee of five, and then also get an 18% of what our cut total is, and then it would add together those two fees, and then eventually it would throw them out as an extra fee. Now, the challenge with this is that not everyone is a programmer, and they would probably find this uh, inconveniency. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this available to the shop manager. Maybe if they come to this particular page or whatever it is, they can quickly add a 5 or 10 or whatever, depending on the change that there is. And they can even add a different percentage without having to look into the code, but the code itself will pick up uh, what's been written and then it will automatically put it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to add to our WooCommerce settings in the different sections that we do have here. So these are different sections like general, products, shipping, checkout, account, email, integration, and advanced. So let's use the, the products page to help us to get that, or we can even use the general to make sure that someone gets it the moment they land here. So in today's video, we're going to create our own tab that we shall call a VAT pricing, and we shall just add it here and to allow us to add our particular settings that we'll use in our plugin. So let's go back to the plugin here, and then we'll start on that. The first thing we need to do is add a filter, and what we're going to be looking for is the WooCommerce settings tab. We're going to be looking for the WooCommerce setting tabs array, and that's the hook we want. And from here, we're going to add our own function, and the function will be take a press, add VAT pricing. Now, of course, we'll delay this by giving it a higher priority of 50, but anything above 10 would do. But let's make it very obvious by choosing 50. Now the next thing we need to do is open up our function and then we shall start writing our code. Uh, let me put some space here so that we are on top of our game. So in here we're going to be getting a settings tab array of information. That's why I return it first and I'm going to pass it inside as an argument here. Now we shall get the settings tab and chain on our own uh, ID for our, our pricing. So I'll just use this to sort of do the same thing. So I'll copy and add this ID, take a press, VAT pricing. And then I'm going to use that as a translatable string to work this. Of course, we'll need our, our text domain We'll copy this and add it here, but we're going to have a title and we're going to call this VAT pricing. And if we save this, come back to our WooCommerce settings and reload this, you're going to see that we now have a new tab here and it has already the save changes button. That's the beauty of using what's already existing. So all we need to do is just add our own settings that will allow our shop owner, our shop manager to make those changes quite easily. So we we'll go to the next step of adding the settings. Now in here, we're going to use an action hook, which is called a WooCommerce setting tabs. And it expects for you to chain on something. This here, what we used our ID, take a press VAT pricing. We shall just add that on. And now we're going to add the function that's going to run with this hook. So I'll copy this here pricing and I'll add on the word settings to make it obvious that we're going to be dealing with settings. 
So we'll write that function as well. And let's not forget its name. And basically what this one, what this function needs is to get the WooCommerce admin fields. And we're going to be adding our fields inside this particular function. However, we can choose to add another function that just taps the admin fields. So let's just do that and say get get take a press add VAT pricing settings or we can just say take take a press VAT pricing settings. So I'll copy this because this is what we need and I'll make another function here and that's why we'll write all our settings in this particular case. So the first thing we'll want here is to return the settings, of course. Now you can make this also filterable so that someone who uses your plugin can also tap into it. So you can actually use the apply filters function in this place. So you can apply filters and with the apply filters, all you need to do is add a unique ID that people can use. So I'll get techie press VAT settings. I'll just add on something very simple. So filter underscore. So that someone can quickly pick this up as a filter and then add in any other settings they want. So we're going to get the settings here and we're going to start chaining onto them. So we'll have our settings already there as a filter, sorry, as an array, and we're going to add an array of information here. So when these settings are picked from this function, they will be sent into the WooCommerce admin fields right here, and that will be passed into this action, and then we will be getting our fields back on the back end of our site. So we shall start adding our array of settings in here. And the first thing we shall do is say the first component we're working with is going to be called a settings title. And this will have, of course, an array of information in it. And then we'll move on to the next piece. But in here, we're going to have an ID so we'll have an ID, a description, a type, and a name in this particular setting. So let me just wrap these with single quotes. And then I'll chain on with our arrow. And then of course with our single quotes here. Now the ID for this should be very unique and I can decide to use the same thing that we have here and just add on settings title at the end of this. And so we're going to have a description and say this is section for handling VAT information. That will be a description. The type will be a title and then we're going to have the name and say this is VAT pricing information. And the only thing that's left is adding commas right here. So if I was to save this, come back to our backend here and reload, you'll see that we now have our VAT pricing information and we have a description following that particular title. Now let's add one field or two fields so that we can be able to finish up on saving the particular pieces that we need. So I'm going to duplicate this two times and then we shall just change the information and the need arises. So what we need for VAT pricing here is we need to have the flat fee. Flat fee and then we're going to get also the percentage. So we'll call this dynamic fee for now. So we'll just call this name will be flat fee. Then this will be dynamic fee. 
the title will be a text because we want it to be a text field. We'll have a text for this as well. Description, we can just say the flat fee. Flat fee uh, number for that. And then I'll just get this sticky press VAT pricing flat fee for the ID and then copy this and then just change this also here for the ID and we'll call this a percentage of tax. So if we are to save this, come back here, reload, we shall see that we now actually have two fields that are reflective of what we want. However, they have jumped out of our section and we need to have them above our particular button. And the way we do that is by introducing a section end so that the button knows where it needs to actually go. So we'll come back here and then I'll duplicate this and we're going to have a section end. Sorry. This should actually be section title to signify that we are beginning with a particular section and what this this is going to be the type will be a section and uh, it doesn't need a name and it just needs an ID so I'll copy section end and then change this to that and then when I save this come back and reload here we'll see our section title coming first and then our section end will end here and then we'll have the button showing up here. So let me try to save a flat fee of 5 and then save our percentage as 18. You'll see that it does not save currently so we need to add that functionality to save our particular form that we have here. So we'll come back to our code and then we are going to add some saving settings. So just like we opened up our form, we can actually use this same information that we have here to add our saving options here. Now the only thing that we are going to change here is instead of having section tabs here, we're going to change this to update options and we'll have our take press VAT pricing just like this ID of the tab. So this is the particular action hook that we need to save our settings. I'll change this to update options. However, when we come to the WooCommerce admin fields and the function that we have for these particular settings, all we need to do is just say WooCommerce update options and then we shall pass in the function that contains our settings fields. So what I'm going to do is just save this, come back here, reload this, and I'm now going to save our 10, and then I'm going to save our 20%, which should be 2, and then when I save this, we have our setting fields actually changing and saving. So let me save this to 5, let me save this to 0 0.18, and then save this here, you'll see that we have this particular content. Now I'm going to go back into our code right here and then I will change this from what we have here as static data and then make it dynamic that will always be fed by the setting options that we do have here. So to get that information we just need to use the default WordPress function of get options and when we are getting options we need to pass in the ID of that particular option and how do we get the ID of those settings is we come here and look for the ID of those particular pieces so what we need here is the techie press VAT pricing flat fee and then we shall need also the dynamic fee so I'm going to get options for this, duplicate it and we need to get also the dynamic fee right here. Now what we're going to do is 
save this as variables. So get that variable, copy this, paste it here, and we need to change the name because we can't have one variable equal to different pieces of information. So just like the flat fee we have here, we're going to change this here, and we're going to get our dynamic fee from here, and we're going to change it here. And so when I save this, come back to our checkout page, let me reload this here. The reason we have this failing is we have an undefined function of get options. This needs to be singular option. So I'll come and make amends here and then save this, come back to our checkout page to reload it and you'll see that our VAT is actually the same as we previously had. It's 95. So what happens if I change this to 10 and save it? If I come here and reload, we expect now to be 100 and we have it as 100. So this is one way of allowing your shop manager actually have all this content available for you, whereby someone who is not a, te a technical person in writing code can just come and fill out this information and then you can use it on the front end wherever you want to use it. If so, you found the video very helpful, please share it with your friends, like it, leave a comment in the description. If you feel like you have a question or you have something to say, you have a different way of doing this, let me know in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet because we have so much good information coming up in the nearest of time. So thank you for watching and bye bye.